So alongside being a big fan of D&D, I also really love the Destiny franchise. And with the Final Shape coming out, I love the idea of the combination of things in a prismatic subclass. So I wanted to put out this video as a kind of, I don't know, build challenge process uh, to kind of see if you guys could come up with some really interesting things if you were able to just steal things from different subclasses while meaning a single class. I know that this will kind of result in a net more powerful version of the class because you're kind of getting to cherry pick the most powerful or most useful features of a class. But I think overall it could make for a really kind of cool thematic version of a class. And I have two examples here that I'm going to go over and kind of let me know what you guys think. But the point of the video is to leave a comment down below with your version of the prismatic subclass and I'll roll out the rules right now. All right, so first things first, I wanna let you guys know that I started a Discord. I really didn't expect the channel to get as much views, especially with the Inquisitor video as it did, but there's a link to the Discord down in the description. You can come, talk to me, get give me ideas, get feedback on your ideas. If you wanna go over homebrew, all that fun stuff, there's gonna be a link down in the description for the channel's new Discord. Looking forward to it. Anyway, the prismatic challenge. Here's what we're looking for. You have to say single class. So if you pick Warlock, you have to come up with four features for 1, 6, 10, and 14. If you pick Sorcerer, you have to do 1, 6, 14, and 18, I think. I actually don't remember when Sorcerers get all their subclass features, but regardless, you have to stay monoclassed. You can also only pick a feature from a subclass once. So if you pick Hexblade, for example, you can only do the one, the six, the 10, or the 14. You can't take like half Hexblade, or you can't take half Genie, or anything like that. Warlock is top of mind for me because it's one of the ones I used in the example here, but we'll get back to that. And that's pretty much the, the rules. Assume that you have access to all of the official books. So you're looking at Player's Handbook, Sword Coast, Xanthar's, Tasha's, all that fun stuff. You have access to all that. It's gonna be official material here. And that's, that's pretty much it. So here's what I came up with. I came up with two, actually. The first one is a Warlock, the second one is a Ranger. Let's do Warlock first, because that's kind of where I was kind of coming up with the idea. So first, Warlock is going to be Warlock 1 in Hexblade. It's going to give us the Hex Warrior, so we can use Charisma for our melee attacks, and it's going to give us Hexblade's Curse. Great bonus action usage. Let's be honest, Hexblade is just a great subclass especially at the first level. So my goal for this is to kind of build the, I don't know, like ultimate version of a Warlock Gish. And I want to be able to do, you know, powerful melee. I want to be able to be pretty survivable. And I want to kind of build this fantasy of a kind of dark warrior kind of thing, almost like a dark knight, like the Final Fantasy version of a dark knight, but not quite. You'll see where I'm going with this. For six, we're actually going to go Archfey, where we can get the Misty Escape feature. Basically, anytime we take damage, we go invisible and teleport away to safety. And then we're going to remain invisible until the start of our next turn, or you know, we do something that is you know, indicative of breaking invisibility, um, making an attack, casting a spell, that fun stuff. I think this is really good survivability. By six level, you're going to have your third level spell slots, so you're going to be able to, you know, counterspell without being seen. You're going to be able to set up your spear shroud um, and, and have that going. Because this version of invisibility doesn't require concentration, you're going to be able to kind of set yourself up for attacks of opportunity, especially if you have other concentration things going like spear shroud or something like that. I think it's going to create a really interesting kind of ambushy opportunity for you. And you get it back every short rest. For 10, we're going to go with the Fathomless you get access to Evard's Black Tentacles. You can cast it without using one of your spell slots, and your concentration can't be broken by taking damage. This just gives you that kind of like shadowy AOE opportunity while you're going around, because you're going to be in melee range anyway. You're going to just be able to get more damage, basically. Um, it makes you a bigger force to, to reckon with on the, the battlefield. And they can't break your concentration on that with damage, so it has to be done in a different way, which is really cool because you don't have to worry so much about maintaining that concentration. You can be up in the fight and not have to worry about it. I think it's a really nice compliment to the Pact of the Blade toolkit. And for 14, 
Limited Wish from the Genie Kit is just so good. Being able to cast any spell of 6 level or lower once every 4 days is, well, you, you know the stipulations, but it's just so strong. And to be able to do that on top of all the other stuff that we're doing, it's just a fantastic feature. So that's my build for the Warlock. For the Ranger, I took kind of a different path and I was blending the, the different options and trying to come up with a way to maximize both our own damage and a companion damage. So I kind of had to get a little bit creative. So for Ranger 3, we're actually going to go Drake Warden because the Drake Companion scales with your level and proficiency bonus without anything else coming into play. It's just naturally going to scale with you. So it is basically a, a free scaling creature that we don't have to put anything more in if we don't want to. And the Drake is just a really good companion to have on the battlefield. I like having it there. It kind of opens up Rangers to more of a, a tactical damage dealing situation instead of just doing the kind of ranged fighting thing that they do um, or that they're known for. If you look back into older editions, Rangers were actually known for dual wielding. So I kind of have that vision in my head of, of the dual wielder ranger with the Drake companion. It's a it's a very like good value version of Drist in my head, and I just I, I can't get that image out. Especially if you pick like a black Drake to be like a, a, a dragon version of Guinevere. Like I don't know, it's a cool image in my head. Anyway, for seven we are going to take the Gloomstalker feature which is basically Resilient Wisdom for free. So it's going to open up a full ASI slot for us in case we are worried about you know, our, our Wisdom saves in a campaign where there's going to be a lot of charm or frighten or any of the, the big Wisdom saves. It's, it's just free Resilient Wisdom and you can actually then use Resilient for another one and be proficient in, in four saves. It's, it's a great feature. It's a great defensive feature. And I, I really like that for this fight that's going to be, you know, kind of you and your companion up in the, the battlefield. I think it's a really interesting combination there. For 11, we are going to pick the Horizon Walker Distant Strike. Basically, we're going to be teleporting around the battlefield, making sure that all of our melee attacks get like this cool, like uh, Steel Wind Strike kind of a thing going on all the time. One, Steel Wind Strike is one of my favorite spells in 5e. I just love the image of it. Now we're gonna kind of get the baby version of that for free on this Drake companion dual wielder fighter that we have going on. I think it's super neat. And then to complement that for 15, we're going to get Fey Wanderer, the Misty Wanderer feature. So we're going to get a whole bunch of free Misty steps, and we can bring our Drake Companion with us when we do it. So we're just going to be popping all around the battlefield with our Drake that's growing with us over time. I I think that this is a super cool just combination of things. It is uh, it's it's Night Stalker meets Drist in my head, and I love this just vision that I have in my head. And that's pretty much it. Those are the two I came up with. I'm super interested to see what you guys come up with. I'm sure there's going to be a bonkers wizard or sorcerer out there. Fighter is also probably nuts, uh, especially if you include like Echo Knight as an option there. I, the the builds that are possible with this, I think are, are super, super interesting. Yes, like I said, I know that they are probably going to be net more powerful than a single class or a single subclass within the class. Probably not as strong as some of the multi-classing options out there, but I don't know. I think that it could be an interesting option. I'm going to see what you guys come up with, and the next time that I am going to start a new campaign or a one-shot, I may offer this to my players, so especially based on what you guys come up with. So let me know what you think would be a really interesting prismatic subclass for one of your classes, and uh, come hang out in the Discord. See you guys later.